All right, we're here to talk about the state of developer advocacy here at Cisco Live Amsterdam. Um, I guess uh, we've been doing a whole bunch of stuff here this week, but what's been going on uh, since, since Las Vegas? Uh, Adrian, what happened, what's been going on with Catalyst lately? Oh, many things. Besides just you know changing the name from DNA Center to Catalyst Center now, uh, we've updated the documentation. I was telling folks in Vegas, we had an interview with Jeff, which is you know, behind the camera right now, but we kind of changed roles here. But uh, we've updated the documentation, right? So we have now the reports from DNA Center. As part of documentation, we have the events list, so you can go and actually see all the events that are being generated by Catalyst Center. You can see the, what type of reports we can generate in what formats. Right? So we have all this information now ready available on the documentation. Uh, so that was the big one. We also started having a live stream every Wednesday. We call it Simplify Networking Automation with, with Ned Gru. I enjoy that um, very much, yeah. Gru. Yeah, so we had a, a session with Gabby Zapodiano, which is the TME from Cisco on the product. And he showed integrations with ServiceNow, with uh, integrations that the, the BU is working on, Ekahau, um, PagerDuty, and all the products, so lots of that more content, video content coming up, hopefully this year, we'll bring more guests. And um, yeah, that's pretty much on, on the Catalyst Center side nice. that, that happened. I know in Las Vegas we had a lot of discussion about SD-WAN at that time. Um, what, what's been going on since then? Yeah, so with SD-WAN, again, the name changed, right? We went to Catalyst SD-WAN. We right. changed from vManage, now it's manager, vBond, and it was, we went through a renaming of all the, the components of SD-WAN, but besides that, we've worked hard to get the sandboxes up to date. So we are running 20.10, sorry, in the sandboxes. We're almost ready. We wanted to be ready for this event, actually, to get to 20.12, to be ready in the sandbox, both the always-on and the reservable. Uh, so both of them, if they haven't been released already today, they'll be in the next couple of days released. Uh, like I said, it was a big push for us to have them ready for Amsterdam. And we're almost, almost there. So uh, that's the big news. Sandbox upgrades on the Catalyst SD-1 side. You'll be able to test 20.12 very shortly um, in our sandboxes. Excellent, excellent. And uh, you also work with iOS XC. There's probably yes. been some stuff going on there as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. So lots of updates, right? iOS XC specifically, we have a brand new dev center. The dev center that we previously had needed a bit of love. It was um, fairly old, needed some updates. So we're happy to actually have launched it for Amsterdam. It's been a work in progress for, for many, many months now. Um, it's a great new dev center. We have links over there now for all resources, iOS XE. And I've just had a conversation with Jeremy and Story. They're the TMEs again for the product. And we've had customers kept asking us, hey, I want one page, right, where I can go and have links to everything. Now we have that. That's awesome. So the dev center now has links to absolutely all the resources that you need to get started. And not only that, at any stage that you are in your automation and development with iOS XE, there's now use cases, links, videos from Cisco Live from previous sessions, there's links to code exchange, there's learning labs, learning tracks for iOS XE, and there's the new sandboxes. Big change also with the sandboxes, we had six sandboxes last year on iOS XE. Some of them were model-driven telemetry based, right? So some of them were just iOS XC, get started. Some of them were RASConf, NetConf. So we consolidated all those six into just two. There's an always wow. on now, and then there's a, a reservable iOS XC sandbox, and you get NetConf, RASConf in that sandbox. We have uh, streaming telemetry enabled. We have Grafana dashboards. We have... Um, Terraform, so we're working by Vegas, by Cisco Lab Vegas, we'll have in production a Terraform learning lab. Terraform is already installed on the dev box in the sandbox. Uh, Yang Suite, right, if you want to start playing with Yang Suite, we have it installed there, so it's a full sandbox with every technology Ansible, right, it's in there. So all the technologies are covered, that gives you a central place where you can test all these tools and all these automation scripts that you can find on the new dev center in that specific sandbox. That's so lots, lots of new 
things for iOS XE specifically. That's great. And I guess finally on your list of things, uh, Meraki. Yeah. There's lots with of going Meraki, on. Meraki yes. So Meraki, big announcements. And with Meraki specifically, we had them several times on the NetGuru live stream that I was telling you. So we've had them come and show us the new Ansible collection for Meraki. We had Oren Brig. Uh, we had Dexter Park from Starbucks coming and showing us the Terraform provider that they, the Starbucks has built specifically for Meraki. So we went over and discussed how you get started with the Terraform provider, declarative infrastructure, configuration, right? How all that comes in the picture and how to actually start ingesting configurations, how to pass in Terraform plans, variables between. So two sessions, two hours of content. You can find them on either LinkedIn, on our DevNet account, or on YouTube, on our YouTube DevNet channel, awesome. all this. Excellent. Um, anything else from Meraki? That's mostly it. And then updates on documentation. We always try to make documentation better. We have here people actually at the Share Your Experience, the both, they share with us a bunch of experiences that they've had. They gave us specific endpoints that they have issues with, right? That this, I would like to have this type of information. The schema should have this. So we've taken all that feedback, we'll bring it back to the engineering team and we'll you know, make it better. That's, that's what we're striving towards. Excellent. Well, thank you, Adrian. Uh, let's, uh, let's ask Jesus some questions about, uh, about his products. Yeah, I don't want to hog the <laughs> microphone. <laughs> Hey, Jesus, uh, I know this is your first Cisco Live here with us in Europe, but I know that a lot's been going on since, uh, since last year with NSO and Crosswork. Um, what's, what's, can you tell us a little bit about what's been going on with NSO? Of course, Paul. Yeah, with NSO, there's been a lot of changes since last few months. For example, with NSO, they have a new release, 6.2. 6 Basically, they're... Uh, they are putting new improvements, performance improvements that many customers are asking for. So if you are on NSO 5.4, 5.8, I highly recommend you to go to 6.2. It is a really, really good release. We are also working on the learning labs. We have been updating the learning labs a lot. We are putting a lot of energy. There's a team working actually for the learning labs, which is quite good. So if you have any feedback, please let us know and we will make it happen. There is also a new component that, if you not, don't know, we have on on DevNet, which is the NSO Playground. Yeah. Right. Um, which yeah. basically you can have NSO on a tab on your web browser, and you can play directly with it. And if you need, you can submit your example to us on Code Exchange, and we can put it with the with the Playground and play right there. So yeah, a lot of changes with NSO. There is also an Explorer with NSO, so you can you have a change log explorer, and what that means is that if there, are, there is a difference between versions of NET or NSO, you can go and you can see the difference. So if there is an enhancement or a bug fix, you can go and check it before you are doing the actual change, so you, you know before time. On Crosswork, I will say that we are also doing some great improvements. The Dev Center was updated. It took us a bit of time, but it's updated now, and it's quite good. And if you don't know, on the DevNet Sandbox, we have also an updated Sandbox to CNC5. So if you want to go and take a look, you can play right now, CNC5. And I was forgetting, but last December, last day of December, CXC6 was released, and we are working on it. So I don't know, probably in one or two months, we will have a new Sandbox for CNC. That's very exciting. Vegas, hopefully we'll get the CNC 6. Yeah, okay. for Vegas oh. it should be there. Okay. Excellent. Well, let's let's get back to you, Adrian. Um, right. what's, uh, you've had a, a big time here at, at Cisco Live Europe. Uh, lots of exciting stuff going on. Yes. Tell me a little bit about what, yes. what, what's going on with you. Yeah, one of my favorite events coming to Cisco Live Europe. Um, lots of things, right? I was telling you about a shared experience, so we had gathered feedback uh, that way, but I've also had a bunch of presentations here, which I've just wrapped up the webhooks and WebSockets presentation that I have. Um, that went well. I'm looking actually to uh, like kind of bring that to the next step and see if we can integrate Apache Kafka into this, get like a pop sub type of model to scale this because, you know, the session that I present is introductory, 
right? For people that don't know WebSockets, don't know Webhooks, so I show them it's, I think, a, a great session just to get people started. But once you want to scale this, right, you're working okay, and make it in a production environment, then you start looking at something like a data bus, similar technology like Apache Kafka, where you can publish your WebSocket uh, or Webhook information, and you can have subscribers accessing the data. So I'm working to, to get that uh, going. Uh, what else? We had a Cisco U session on introduction to Catalyst SD-WAN, was very well received. Uh, so I'm looking forward to see the scores over there. Hopefully it went well. We've had Catalyst Center uh, SDK introduction, a hands-on workshop here, also went really well. Folks got great, um, great feedback. And then I had my CSD pipelines talk, showing folks on how to get started with GitLab and CSD pipelines, kind of bringing all of that into their, their, their minds at least, because it's a beginner session, and showing them how you can bring Ansible, GitLab, PyTS, NXOS, OSXC, all these different technologies into a complete pipeline. And basically, you just give folks access to a YAML file, they update the YAML file, they do a git push, and that triggers the pipeline, performs testing, right? performs the configuration change in your network, you get statistics, metrics, and all of that. Uh, so those were the sessions. We've had Media Engineer right here. We have Media Author from my book. We're working on a second edition on that. Nice. Uh, lots, lots of things. But most of all, I just love being here, meeting people, uh, meeting old friends, making new ones. So uh, great event overall. I always love coming down here. So, Excellent. Yeah. And Jesus, uh, this is your first Cisco Live at Cisco Live Europe, but you live in Europe as well, so it's a, a, a short nice trip. short trip for you, right? Um, you've had some sessions as well. T tell us a little bit about what how, how your experience has been. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, I mean, thankfully for me, it's not really that hard the uh, jet lag, so that, that, that was good, that was good to start. And yes, this was my first Cisco Live. I think it's been great. My session on network telemetry and AI for, network, for resolving network incidents was quite good. Uh, people like it. They like it how you can use PyATS, LangChain, WebEx, Grafana, the Tickstat, Netcom to resolve issues with AI. And I believe that's something I also want to share on Cisco Live Las, Las Vegas. And for next Cisco Live, I'm also planning another two sessions. One is with a workshop with NSO, but the key part for me is to showcase how you can work with Python. So that's something I consider quite important because that unlocks many possibilities, very powerful possibilities. And the other session that I'm planning and I hope that I can share is how you can improve your code uh, for network, for humans, sorry. Because many people program good code, but it's sometimes hard to read. It's like a spaghetti. You don't know what is happening. You don't know, okay, what is this thing doing? And what I want to share is how you can better, how you can write better code for everybody. So if you can go, you can see it, you can understand, and it's very clearly, and can scale as well. So that's the, that's the session I would like, and I'm preparing. And I would like to, to, to share it. And I would say that, yeah, so far, this has been a great event. And I agree with Adrian. What I like the most is that I'm able to connect with people I'm able to make new friends, I'm able to meet my team. So yeah, yeah, so far, it's been a great experience. Excellent. Cool. Let's, let's ask Adrian, uh, what's, we have a, you know, Cisco Live Vegas coming up uh, yeah. in several months. Um, we have all sorts of stuff going on with our, with our products and with the developer advocacy in general. Uh, what do you see coming up for, well, I guess let's start with Catalyst. Uh, what, what do you see coming on with that? So with Catalyst Center, uh, we're working on new sandboxes. As you might know, there's a virtual instance now of Catalyst Center, right? It used to be you need an appliance to purchase that. Now we have a virtual instance. So what that gives us is the option of scaling our sandboxes. We currently only have four reservable. They're very popular. They're booked you know, weeks to months in advance, so we know that and we're addressing that by just trying to bring the virtual Catalyst Center into our sandbox so that we can give access to more people to these sandboxes. So I'm hoping four to up to new six new sandboxes. We're gonna make it like eight or up to ten. So that should alleviate a bit, you know, the the fight, the continuous of people trying to reserve the sandboxes. 
So that's the big one that's coming for Catalyst Center. Uh, on the sandbox side, we want you know to make the technology available to to more people. Uh, going over next to right, I was Catalyst SD WAN. Uh, on that one, we'll have more video content, I'm hoping. I'm working with people now to actually bring them on the live stream and show us what they're working on. Documentation, we'll also get, of course, the API documentation. We'll get updates. I'm looking forward to that. And we're also going to update documentation, you know, because everything is referencing Catalyst, well, SD-WAN, and like I say, vManage, right? And we're going to update all of that with the new naming convention. The APIs will kind of stay the same, by the way. So if there's uh, any API endpoints that have vManage, or they will stay the same uh, for the older versions. But for versions going forward, you'll start seeing um, also a bit of renaming. We are aware, of course, of backward compatibility. So we're not going to make breaking changes. And if we are, you're going to see them in the change logs, of course. Uh, so that's for Catalyst SD1, improvements over there, and learning labs. We're going to review, okay. we're going through a reviewing process right now throughout all technologies, by the way, uh, to see you know, what learning labs we need to update. Some of them are a bit obsolete or uh, the technology uh, you know, has evolved, of course, over the years. So we're doing a refresh across all technologies that we have for the learning labs, learning tracks, and learning modules over there. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, what about iOS XC? With iOS XC, again, learning labs comes straight up to mind, right? Um, we're going to add a FAQ to the Dev Center. We know people are interested in frequently asked questions. So that's a work in progress. We have about uh, 13 pages in the work document of just frequently asked questions that we get, Jeremy, Story, myself, we get from our customers, partners, about our SXC, right? So we'll have that list ready by Vegas with quite a bit of questions over there on you know, frequently asked questions. Uh, learning Labs on that side, we already have the Sandbox and the Dev Center updated. That's what I would say is, is the main main topic going uh, into Vegas. A lot going on there. Uh, and finally, what about Meraki? With Meraki, specifically, we're looking, we've had quite a bit of videos already with, with them over the past three, four months. So I think we're going to give them a break. We're going to bring some new technology in. Uh, but I've submitted some sessions for Vegas about consolidation into one session of everything automation Meraki. So I'm going to cover the Ansible collection in the same Terraform provider and also the Python SDK. So I want to have a session like, okay, you want to know everything programmability from Meraki, right? In 45 minutes, I'm going to explain to you what each of these different tools and SDKs are capable of. Why would you use one compared to the other? Right? What advantages each one of them bring to you? Um, and that's my main one. And then for Vegas, I know it's, it's a lot of stuff. But there's one more thing. <laughs> I submitted a couple new presentations. I'm excited about the sustainability presentation that I'm working on. So I'm very excited about that one too. Yes. So we've started working hands down on sustainability content. So I'm really excited to bring to people sustainability perspective on iOS XC, right? How can you get power statistics? How, what can you do with that type of information? How you can put it on the dashboard and know at any point how much power your infrastructure is consuming? How can you optimize that? You know, shut down ports that are not being used during the night. If nobody is using the light somewhere, it's being powered on by a PoE switch. How can you also make it smarter and save, conserve power? Same thing on the Meraki side, right? How can we make the infrastructure more sustainable, more power consumption friendly, right, going forward? Uh, so yeah, excited about that, that option too for Vegas. Fun, and that sounds you know, great. Overall. Uh, any any uh, sneak previews or special guests coming up on Negru, or is that gonna be a surprise? Yes, so <laughs> I'm looking, once we go back from here, uh, I'm in talks with Sean Kavanaugh from Red Hat Ansible, so he's going to be a guest right after we get back. Uh, we're going to talk Ansible automation platform, right? Um, Sean is a close friend of mine. We have a, hopefully a presentation going into Vegas with him together 
on GitOps and, and Ansible take on that. So we've had it last year in Vegas. We had really great success with this. So we want to bring it back to Vegas uh, this year. Uh, so that's my next guest. And yes, I've actually connected with several people here on the floor and they're all looking forward to collaborate with us. So be on the lookout, much more people coming with uh, network automation use cases. We're heavy on code, as you know. One hour, heavy on demos, code, explain it to me, show me how it works, and then a GitHub repo where you get access to what we've shown you and you can do the same thing in your own environment. So exciting, that's awesome, thank yeah. you. Uh, Jesus, uh, I know not only do we have, are you planning some things for coming up for Cisco Live uh, Vegas, but also there's developer days coming up. Uh, what do you see coming, uh, what's coming up with NSO in the next, next several months? Yeah, as you say, Paul, uh, we have developer days. We, it is going to be on the 26th of March, May, sorry, if I remember correctly. Uh, as always, we are going to put the date uh, on the video. And yeah, it's a great event. Uh, many, we gather together in Stockholm and we talk about network automation. It's really good uh, event. For example, we have Crossword, we have NSO. There are new products on the Crossword, for example, Workflow Manager. Um, so it is a nice event. I would say take advantage if you can go. Uh, I was there last year and I can say that I learned a lot. Uh, many technical sessions for uh, people who are starting, for intermediate, for advanced level. Um, so yeah, really, really good event. And for Cisco Live Las Vegas, I forgot to say before that we are also updating the sandbox of NSO. Oh, nice. And the good thing is that we are bringing more NSO instances inside the sandbox so people can now play with the scenarios like high availability, which is quite difficult if you don't have the resources needed. So that's something that I'm really looking forward and I believe that it will be quite, quite useful. Excellent. Well, thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Jesus. It's very, very good to hear about all the stuff that's been going on and that's going to happen. It's very exciting. And thank you, uh, developer community, for tuning in. Thanks a lot. See you in Vegas.